What happens when you level up to the max your ADP in Dark Souls 2? Hello everybody, I'm Stream Your Mind and today I'm here to answer that very question. There is only one rule in this run and it's pretty straightforward. I can only level up my adaptability stat. And for those of you who for some reason don't know what adaptability, also known as ADP, is, I will shortly explain it to you so that we are all on the same page. Basically, adaptability is the stat responsible of your invincibility frames during rolls, which means the higher your ADP, the better chances you have to survive an attack by dodging it. Apart from being directly responsible for your survivability during combat, it also is responsible for how quickly you heal, making this stat even more valuable and fundamental in making your Dark Souls 2 experience not a complete shit show. But according to the wiki, ADP might influence several other mechanics of the game, which to this day still remain to be discovered. So if technically this stat makes the game 100% easier, where exactly is the challenge? Well, the challenge resides in the fact that I will go through the entirety of the base game with my starting vigor, dexterity and strength and all the other stats, but most importantly I just wanted to see if I could figure out what other purposes this mysterious stat might have. But before we get into this i would really appreciate it if you guys could like and comment the video and subscribe to the channel i'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers and it would mean a lot if you could take a few seconds off your time to help me reach that goal but enough talk let's jump straight into this and you can bet your ass that there will be crying there will be some smiling and there will be definitely a lot of dying After waking up from an alcohol-induced coma, uh, what the hell was in the Estes, man? From the things betwixt, I then entered a shack with three very kind elderly ladies that for some reason started telling me these very nice things like You're finished. And You'll go hollow. What is your name? So, I then introduced myself to the hags. My name is Iframes. Iframes these nuts, bitch! Anyway, I went for a swordsman class and I know Explorer has the most ADP points out of all the classes with a whopping 12 ADP, but I chose swordsman for dex, because who wants to have sex anyways, right boys? Swordsman starts with 6 ADP, which is 86 agility, and this means, if the wiki is correct, which I doubt it is, I should have about 8 iframes and for comparison that is about as many as you would get while mid rolling in Dark Souls 1. After making myself look like a beautiful body positivity model and choosing the bonfire aesthetics cause what the hell would you get otherwise nothing? Ah uh, not this bitch again, yeah yeah alright crazy grandma I'm gonna leave cause I got a throne to claim, see ya. For fun I decided to mock the AI of the poor hippo looking demon from outside the shack. Let's not forget that this game was made by the legendary developers of From Software. I mean, look at this. Anyways, once I arrived in Majula, I immediately picked up the life gems, punched the rock for the Estus shard, which I then totally forgot to pick up, and made my way to the forest of the giants, just to become a snack for this big boy. And it was now that I realized I haven't sat at any of the bonfires I encountered so far. Anyways, after lighting the bonfire in Majula, I arrived at the Cardinal Tower bonfire to buy the key to open up the blacksmith's shack. Dude, I'm trying to make a video here. Jesus, like, can you just leave me alone? Back at the hub, I opened up the door for the blacksmith and went to Hyde's tower to do that thing that everybody does with the dragon rider. Once the dragon rider was killed, I used his soul to get the rapier, which is why I actually chose dexterity by the way. I leveled up my ADP from 6 to 20 and my agility went up from 86 to 96, which gains me 3 more frames bringing me to a total of 11. I then returned to Hyde's tower where I got roasted by a chicken and got reminded why gank fests are just not worth the effort. So I burned another bonfire aesthetic, did that thing that everybody does again, returned to the blacksmith and bought 6 titanite shards and upgraded the rapier to plus 3. Popped the rest of my souls and got my ADP to 31 one, which bumps my agility to 104, taking my iframes to 12. Back to the forest of the giant buttholes, I acquainted some fire bombs from the old lady to try and get this skip. Alright, cool. I have two more. Alright, this is a little bit annoying, but I'll try again after I pick up the titanite shard and the rest of the items upstairs. Fine, I'll go through the boring way. Once I got to the ballista room and had to deal with three dudes at the same time. That's what she said. <laughs> 
I actually had a sense of how my rolls were actually so improved. Not only that, the gameplay felt a lot more slippery. I will show you what I mean later on in the video. Anyways, after the funniest knock knock joke ever in the history of humanity up to this point in time, I picked up the life ring and the large titanite shard. I definitely died just before the fog wall here because I realized I had forgotten to die to the pursuer. Where are you going bro? Anyways, I crossed the fog wall, opened up the shortcut, got back to Hyde's tower to pick up the binding ring. Thanks Forlon, I always appreciate it when you show up. Anyways, I picked up the rings of Biden. Oh my god Forlon. Jesus. Dark Souls 2 should be considered harassment at this point. Anyways, time for finger butthole. I wish I could say the last giant fight was actually hard, but as we all already know, it really wasn't. I had a lot of iframes at this point and could just phase through his attacks like the ghost in New Law on the Ruins from Dark Souls 1. Anyway, with our giant friend finally put to bed, I exhausted the merchant's dialogue, used the last giant soul to get to 34 ADP, bringing me to 13 iframes per roll, and I then got the rapier to plus 4, which I tested the effectiveness on Moglin to gain his armor set in order to gain more souls and get more levels fast. I finally remembered then to get the Esther shard from the well. This is how useless you made this item in this game from software. Time for Pursuer. And don't worry, I'm gonna fight him normally this time. Psych! Haha, <laughs> you really fell for that? After getting a lift from a random bird and getting dropped off at the Lost Bastille, where I picked up two human effigies, I returned to Majula to buy 50 life gems and got my ADP from 34 to 40, gaining me up to 110 agility. Let us all thank From Software for never implementing such a dumb mechanic like this one in any of their other Souls games. On my way to No Man's Wharf, where I picked up an effigy and some souls, as well as some sublime dust, which I'll definitely never remember to use, I made myself look pretty again and headed my way to the Pirates of the Caribbean theme park. I did not waste any time here and I ran straight to the Flexile Sentry, which I killed without any problems. I mean, does anybody actually have a problem with this boss? I mean, yeah, the levels of the water going up is actually a cool concept and a cool mechanic in my opinion, but I don't know, man, it's kind of underwhelming how they implemented it. Once I returned to home sweet home and leveled up ADP from 40 to 47, I went to my next stop at the Huntsman Copes. After lighting the bonfire, I picked up another sublime dust, which I'll never remember to use again. Yeah, people, I've been on that amber herb a bit too much lately, I gotta admit. Anyway, after unlocking the bridge, I was able to survive Rena's attacks. Rena? 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 I don't know how you say it. And I entered the longest boss fight in this run. I'm not kidding, this is my top 3 worst boss fights in all of Dark Souls. It's long, boring, uninspired, and it's only a bunch of regular enemies that mindlessly chase you around. It even almost broke my rapier, can you believe that? The lords go down easily, and I finally get access to the Harvest Valley. Before moving forward though, I went back to the Firekeeper to upgrade my ADP to 52, which gives me 111 agility, and this meant that I went from 13 to 14 iframes per roll. That slippery feeling I was talking about before was growing stronger, cause I felt the enemies kind of missed me a lot more, even when I wasn't rolling or I was like mid rolling, but up to this point I only thought it was some weird placebo effect. I had more confirmation later on in the video, so please keep watching. Anyways, after speaking to Cloan in the Harvest Valley, I picked up every item in the first pool of poison, including the titanite chunk, got attacked by the hottest enemies in the game, because because they are pyromancers, and, and only for that reason, I swear. After picking up some large titanite shards placed with the most annoying and unnecessary ganks in the game, I was able to successfully kill the hardest target in the whole series, the fucking crystal lizards. And I was now ready to face the mighty covetous demon, which, with his three crazy attack patterns, went down as the pathetic excuse of a boss ever witnessed by the human eye. How does somebody go from making this to also make this? Okay, enough trash in the game. I upgraded my ADP once again and upgraded my rapier to plus 5. Back in Eastern Peak, I burned the windmill, used the soul of Jabba the Hutt, bought the fire aesthetic from Cloan, and I burned it in Hyde's Tower to once again humiliate the Dragon Rider. I used 12,000 souls to buy a fragrant branch of Yore and used the rest on ADP. 
I used it to free a junkie who clearly had a bit too much snow last night, if you know what I mean. And I opened up the most annoying door ever, and then waited for said door to actually open, with the most annoying gank ever, and finally reached the next bonfire. In the shaded woods, I whacked some trees to distract the invisible assassins. Here, I picked up some more souls, and I then made my way to the shaded ruins, but realized I forgot to pick up the most important item, the Chlorinthy Ring plus one. In the Shaded Ruins, I picked up a Titanite Chunk and some more souls as well as a Farron Key, which again, I'll never use. Time for Quilag, I mean Nashka. Nashka, uh, are you okay? Yeah, nothing much to say here. The Rapier is a beast, even if not fully upgraded, and dodging attacks has become like sort of a joke at this point, so my low health isn't really feeling like a problem right now. Anyways, once I defeated Nashka, I leveled up my ADP to 63, and it was time for Brightstone Sildora. Here I just picked up a shield, some souls, and some armor sets, nothing special. Alright, time for the worst boss in the game. Look at how pathetic this is. Hey yo, what the fuck? Anyways, nothing to see here, it was my little cousin playing, not me. He, he took my controller against my will, so... <laughs> I can't believe they give you a titanite slap for this fight. Like, come on, we all got to admit, this game is just trolling us at this point. After lighting the bonfire, I quickly traveled to No Man's Wharf, where I broke this wall right here, killed this crystal lizard to get some more large tits, and then went back to the Harvest Valley and killed another lizard for some more large tits. I am a large tits enjoyer, guys, I gotta admit. With the large titanites and the chunk I have found while playing, I was now able to get my weapon to plus 10. Upgraded my ADP from 62 to 65, and I was ready for Freya. We all know how this works. Bait an attack from one of its head, and run to the other one to get some hits in. Rinse and repeat. Using a torch is advised if you want to keep the smaller spiders away, which, if you don't have the torch, they are unironically become the real boss in this fight. Anyway, with a plus 10 rapier I had no problems whatsoever, so after getting my ADP to 71 and reaching 113 in agility, I've easily defeated Mitha and went up the most consistent elevator. You know what? No. I'm not going to make fun of this damn elevator anymore, it's been so overused, it makes the Aquaman joke of talking to fish seem like a totally new and fresh piece of comedic act. Arthur Curry. I hear you can talk to fish. Anyway, Iron Keep. Holy shit, I hate this place so much for two main reasons. And the two main reasons are the two invaders. They are just annoying, overpowered, and if we put the Alon Knights on top of it, which they run as if they had spicy food last night and they can't wait to take a giant shit on you, you will die a lot of times. And as expected, I died so many times that I decided to attempt speedrunning this level, but I soon realized I couldn't escape my past no matter how much I wanted to. So I decided to fight them regularly, and it may have taken a while, but I was able to defeat Fencer Sharon first, and with her souls, I bought some charcoal pine raisins, and now all I had to do was not die. What? <sighs> okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. Dying meant that I had to defeat Dennis as well. At least he was a bit easier considering I exploited his weakness during his magic attacks and backstabbed him to death. The rest of the level wasn't too bad. I used all the traps against my enemies like I was Sun Tzu. Iron King was the Iron King. I did fall into the lava because me brain stupid, but apart from that, the rapier just obliterated him. Another easy dub. Back in Majula, I bought the cat ring for later and upgraded my ADP to 80 and gained 114 in agility, which means I had one more frame added to my 14, taking me to a 15 total iframes. I then traveled to the Lost Bastille to defeat the Ruined Sentinels, which went down easily. I was doing so much damage. Uh, by the way, let's address the elephant in the room. I am using the rapier and I heard it's the most broken weapon in the game. 
So, I thought it was fitting since leveling ADP makes this game a lot easier and practically you're cheesing it. And also, I never used it myself so I wanted to see what the fuss was all about. I forgot to mention that I paid a little visit to the head of Vanguard for the Golden Pine Raisins in the Shaded Woods. With the souls from the Sentinels, I bumped up my ADP from 80 to 83, got back to the Bastille to pick up a Flame Butterfly, used the Fragrant Branch of Yore to get access to the bonfire, used the Bastille Key found near the Servant's Quarter bonfire, turned on the lights, and this is what I'd look like when I know I have to do a challenge run for Dark Souls 2. I'ma sit back and relax and let you enjoy this one. Once the lost sinner was finally found, I went back to Majula and spent the souls I obtained from killing her to upgrade from 83 to 89 ADP. And after equipping the cat ring, I was ready to take my leap of faith. And the cat ring barely got me to survive the fall. I was then able to arrive at the wonderful gutter, where I was reminded immediately why I hate this place. After running around this place and dying a bunch of times... I was finally able to reach the Black Gulch. Yay! Two annoying places, one next to the other. Thank you very much, B-Team. Here we go, the last of the four boss souls we need. The Rotten. I had so much control over my rolls at this point that this fight was literally a cakewalk. The damage was good, and overall this boss is kind of a joke anyways. Just like this game. HA! <laughs> GOT <laughs> Once the Ryan was sent to rot in hell, I used his soul to increase my adaptability once more, as you can see on the screen, and I reached the Drangley Castle. Here, I lighted the first bonfire, confronted Fat Robin Hood and the Meat Rider. Needless to say that this is the most original boss fight I have ever seen, and yeah, also my damage was kinda disgusting. Halberd Boy is the first one to go, and Legolas with an eating disorder was next. Now that's a lot of damage! I then took a little detour to Majula to, you guessed it, upgrade my ADP from 94 to 96. And I then returned to the castle. Hmm. I guess ADP does not shield you from the wonders that are the Dark Souls 2 hitboxes, right? <laughs> Jesus, hold your horses, buddy. There you go, much better now. Anyways, after the longest elevator ride since Demon Souls, I obtained the key to the King's Passage, and this man, Looking Glass Knight, was my next victim.
Selling short bow I found in Iron Keep to plus 7 thanks also to Cloan selling me her large tits. I bought 999 arrows in preparation for the next area, popped all the rest of my souls and finally reached 9980p. Holy shit, we did it. And this meant that I got to 116 agility, giving me 16 iframes per roll, which is obviously the max you can get. I was now the agility god. And since I maxed out the only stat I could level up for this run, this meant one thing and one thing only. A motherfucking montage! Alright, we have arrived at the worst boss battle in the base game of Dark Souls 2. And yes, this is the most annoying duo fight in the series if you ask me. The arena is totally unbalanced as there are no pillars to separate you from the two. No cover, no nothing. Just two sons of bitches that mindlessly chase you around the arena, gank you from start to finish and heal each other. In normal runs, they usually aren't that bad, but if you couple all of what I just said with the fact that I also had a tiny health bar, you can see why I struggled a lot with this boss. I even tried to get the Watcher to fall to her death, but RNGesus was not on my side that day. So after a lot of tries, I said fuck it and summoned Bernard. He was just what I needed to be pushed over the ledge. And you know man, I don't even feel that bad about it. That's how much I hate this boss. So Nashandra was the only remaining obstacle between me and my throne. And guess what? I also died to Nashandra. Three times indeed. Her lasers kept catching me and I don't want to talk about it. Apart from me being, you know, bad at the game, I just poked her a few times during her magic attacks cause yeah, they are easy to punish and are kinda long so you can get a lot of hits in. She is the most disappointing final boss in any of the Souls games. <laughs> Alright, so what did I learn from all of this? 
Well, ADP is crucial in making this game actually fun. And it's so trivial to the game that you can just level it up and nothing else and the game will be a cakewalk. As I said, the only difficulty I encountered was with the Throne Watchers and Defender. I'm sure that with a bit more patience, I could have handled them myself, but hey, it is what it is. But did I actually find out what other mysterious things does agility do? No, no, not really. I mean, I have a feeling that my character's hitboxes got sharper and everything felt a lot tighter, giving me that sense of like slippery I was talking about. But this could be all in my head as I don't have any means to prove it. I still hope this video was somewhat entertaining for you and if it was, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. It really does help the channel a lot more than you would think. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video and I will see you in the next one, where I will be cheesing every single boss in Dark Souls 1, so make sure to ring that bell if you don't want to miss it.